Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Mountain Breeze Poncho. Now this is classified as easy but I'm gonna bump it up a level to more intermediate because how we get ourselves started is going to matter for the whole thing. So what you're looking at here is that the particular sample, see how it's flat here but then it has some ridging here. This ridging only appears on one side of the poncho that we're and we'll be talking about that throughout today's tutorial. So how we get started is going to, to basically matter. Once you get this thing started and you understand it, you can plow through this thing which then comes back to being easy again. So there is a crochet diagram uh, for you. There is an air there. So I will show you that air and it's right in here and I'll just zoom in and show you. So after each of these revolutions you have to turn to go back in the other way. So we're gonna be touching that here. These slip stitch marks here is just showing the separation between the two sides. It's not, you don't have to do that. So it's just a matter of just being able to follow it along. So it's just actually the points are right here and here and this is kinda like flat straight up. So right here it shows that there's a double crochet, chain two, double crochet in one chain. It's not, it's in two chains. So just like here it's in using two. So one double crochet is in one chain, the other double crochet is in the other. So just make sure you're keeping an eye on that and that's pretty much the only thing I've seen so far. So you're going to also notice that this diagram is not symmetrical on uh, top or bottom. So it took me a while to see that but I'll show you what I, show, what I found. So as I told you this particular shawl when you look at it from this perspective there is one side here. See how it's all completely flat like this? Well just one side here has all this raised up front treble work as you see. So it's only on one side. So when you're looking at this the flat side is the top side here and when you get to the bottom we're going to start off in the very bottom right here and it's gonna start building out. So right here is where that ribbing all starts going down and once you establish that then you just keep on going and that will just build itself out just like you see within the model here. So you see how it started off and then it just builds out as you're doing that. So once you get that it's pretty much easy to understand. I'm going to recommend to you a couple things at this point. I think you need two stitch markers. I think they need to be different colors. So what I decided for myself is that I just used pink and blue. You can decide whatever color you want and just put on the sheet pink stitch marker and this one will be a blue stitch marker. Until you get this pattern really established it, you may get confused on what side that you're actually on. So the top here is the flat side as I mentioned and that ridging in the ribbing all starts down here. So if you put a stitch marker at least you can confirm where you are. So if I'm gonna put the blue stitch marker here on the bottom I will know that, that this side here is going to be where the ridging are and of course if you don't think you need to that's up to you. So there are uh, five sizes available on this. Let's talk about those sizes and let's talk about how that's gonna impact today's pattern. So we have sizes here all the way from small to three extra large. So when we're looking at it you can see that they're small all the way to three X. So when there's a bracket like this the first number is the small so chain 70. The next one is the medium and then large and then extra or lar extra large uh, sorry one uh, X, two X and 3x. So you're gonna follow the one that makes sense. So when you're doing a repeat just like you see you can see that you're just following the brackets as you go. This is really not a hard thing to understand. It's just pretty much getting yourself started in this thing and then once you see the growth happening then it just a matter of growing it out. So um, at first it may be a little confusing to you but um, don't uh, turn off. Let's just see if you can do it. And you're gonna need a size M as in Michael nine millimeter crochet hook. I'm using an eight millimeter size L just cause that's what I have. And I'm gonna be using Peyton's Lincoln Fog today as my choice just to play with. It was recommending Red Heart Dreamy but I don't have that here in my collection and I'm just gonna use a solid color just to make sure that you understand it all the more. Okay, you ready? So let's uh, go in and I will tell you the sizing difference as we're going and uh, we're just gonna get ourselves started. So grab your yarn and hook and let's play. So we have two sizes of chains to make. You can either make the chain 70 for those size that you're working on or chain 78. You decide which one you're gonna do today. So it's just gonna open up the neck a little bit more and the major difference between all the sizes is literally the length of it. So um, this sizing right at the very front end is just for the neck. So when you go to chain I'm gonna chain just 10 for to start. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and once I have my 10 I'm gonna pull that off and without twisting that chain I'm gonna insert in the very first one here and then put this back on and continue. So 11, 12, 13, 14 
and 15. So go either go to 70 or 78 now and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I officially have 70 on my hook so just yarn over and pull through and through the original chain and therefore it should not be twisted and you'll have the starting circumference that you will have for your neck. So let's now officially begin round number one. In round number one I want you to have your stitch markers handy for you. And remember I'm using pink for the top of the diagram which is what I'm gonna be starting with and then the bottom of the diagram the other side of the loop I'm gonna use blue. So have those handy. So what I want you to do is that I want you to chain three. So one, two, three and I want you to double crochet on the back hump of the chain starting on the next one and do the next two in a row. So all of this is working in sets of three in the future and you'll see that happening in just a moment. So once you have that done you're now gonna officially turn the first corner at the top of the diagram. Okay this is the flat side. So you're gonna chain two, one and two and starting in the very next chain so they don't share the same chain like it shows in the diagram at this time of filming. You're gonna uh, double crochet that one plus two more in a row. So that, remember I said they're in sets of three. Now before you go any further I want you to place the one stitch marker that you assigned to the top of that diagram. This will be the flat side and put it into that chain two space. So therefore you can see the difference of this in the future. And you just need to have it in for a couple rounds and then you can take it out. Now going forward we're now going to repeat the sets, in, uh, sets of three in a row for a set number of times. So in this case I want we want to chain one, skip just one chain and double crochet in the next three. So that was considered one of a repeat number and I'll cover that in just a moment. So now that it's in one time we have to either repeat this for the different sizes. You're either gonna repeat, uh, you're gonna repeat this. So this is one of either eight. So you'll have seven more to do. Or if you're doing the larger sizes, then it will be this is one of nine. So then you make sure that you have nine altogether. So when you go and jump, you're gonna just chain up one, skip one, and double crochet in the next three, and therefore you'll have two sets. So I want you to continue to go along this chain until you get the repeat number that you want. So remember, don't count the one out of the corner so that I put the stitch marker there so it's obvious. So this is one, and then the next one will be two, and then three four and etc. So you're putting in three in a row and then chaining one and then skipping one and then continue. So what I want you to do is repeat this either uh, having total of eight of these in a row or nine depending on your size and I'll see you back here in just a moment as we turn the other corner which is gonna be at the bottom of the diagram. So now I just officially I can count that there's eight sets. So let me just back out a little bit so you can see this a little bit more. So I'm not counting the corner here as we started. So I started in the next one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So if you're doing the larger sizes you should see 9 of those. So we're going to now turn the corner. So we're gonna chain 2 and starting in the next stitch available to you, you're gonna start 3 in a row again. And then after we get that I want you to put in that blue stitch marker or whatever color you decided to use and this will represent the side that will have the ridging that you can see that the model has. And again once we get the ridging started you'll see it immediately. It's just getting it there and we'll put that stitch marker in so that we can see it in the future. So getting all the way back you don't really have to excessively count because you'll run out of stitches by the time you get there. But what you can do is that just chain up one, skip one and put three single crochets into the next one and you continue that for a set number of times. So you will either do seven times for uh, for the small uh, the smaller sizes and then it's eight times for the larger sizes. But if you're just going across your chain you sh it should work out for you. And then when you put it down you'll be able to count the number of sets on each side of these stitch markers so that you'll be able to verify that it is actually equal. So skip one, put three in a row, uh, chain one, skip one, three in a row and do this all the way back to where you had started and I'll see you there in just a moment. So as I'm coming all the way back around I just have one stitch left. So I'm just going to chain one and slip stitch it to the top of the chain three. 
So let's take a look at the groups of three so that you completely understand it. So you have the stitch markers in. Hopefully you put those in. So you should be able to count for this. This is a smaller size. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I should have nine on this side and therefore there should be a duplicate number. So if you're working on the other size then what's gonna happen is you're gonna count how many you did here and there should be the duplicate number of here. So starting here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So here's the thing with this particular pattern. When we're finished around we have to turn and go back in the other direction and therefore we're gonna start row number two. So that's what we're gonna do and let's begin to do that journey next. So let's begin round number two. We've already turned it. So I'm gonna show you a set of instructions that I believe that it is. I'm not 100% clear but I'm going to do it anyway. So I want to chain three. So that's a given. So one, two, three. That's your first double crochet of a grouping of three. The next one is down in this chain right here and what I would recommend, I've tried going the other way. So I wasn't sure if the, the designer wants us to stay in the front of this and stay in front of that or encase this underneath. I think it would look cool if it was underneath. So I'm going to wrap the hook and I'm gonna go into that skip chain and I'm gonna go in right through and let this strand go and cover over top of that chain space there. And you're gonna pull through and you're gonna pull a little bit of slack Okay, and then pull through two and two. And so that will be visible on both sides. And then in the same space you're gonna double crochet. So I'll show you again. So chain one, go to the next space, double crochet into the chain one space first. And then do that extended double. So going down, go into the skip chain and just stay and encase that chain one space inside the stitch pull up, give it a bit of slack and then pull through and through. And then in that same space put in a double crochet. So I'll show you one more time. So chain one, start with the double, do an extended, give it a bit of slack and then a double. So I'll go all the way to the first corner and I'll show you how to turn the corner here and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm approaching the next corner. I can clearly see it with my stitch marker. See it's easier if you can do that. So I'm gonna chain one and in the corner I'm going to do what is called as a V stitch. So the V stitch is just a, a smaller word for two double crochet into that space, chain two and then just move that stitch marker to the other side and do the other side of that same chain two space. Now all the corners are always gonna be this so all two of them so that's pretty easy to remember throughout the whole thing. So then you're gonna continue on in the same manner. So just chain up one, go to the next one and just do what you already know. So double and then an extended and then in the same spot another double. It's like a glorified granny if you really think about it from this perspective. And then chain one and keep doing that. So I'll see you at the next corner where we will turn the corner and come around and I'll show you how to finish this round. round so as you're coming around just in the next corner you can clearly see it. So I've chained one before I've done it and another V stitch. So there'll be a two double crochet, chain two and just move that out of the way. So it's two double crochet again and then we're back to where we had started. So in order to join it to the top of the chain three you have to chain one first and then join. And then after the end of the round we turn and now we go back and we're now going to do round number three and this is where the equation will change slightly. So going forward the odd numbers are now going to have those ridges. So when we're on an even number we're on the back side of the project and then when we're on a, uh, an odd number we're on the front side. So row, round number one was the actual good side. So now that we're about to start row number three this is when we're going to put in those front post trebles so that you see the ridging that the model has. And then when we go and do round number two we turn it and we're technically on the back of it so we don't do that. So let's begin to do round number three. So I told you that the ridging does not start until we're at the bottom here. So this is the marked one with the blue. So we're not gonna worry about the ridging until we get down there. So that's where it's gonna start building out on this side. So to begin we're going to just chain three. So one, two, three and we're gonna fill in this spot here with what we already know with this extended 
double crochet. But instead of going into the chain, we're going into the middle one of the grouping of three. So going in, going into the middle stitch down here and just giving it a bit of slack and then pull through two and two. And then in that same space, just ply it, uh, pry it open with your fingers if you don't see it and then finish it. So chain up one and now the next one has the stitch marker there so you can see that and that's going to be your V stitch. So it's two double crochet first followed by chain two and two double crochet. So we're now going to get ourselves established here and what we need to do is that we just need to do exactly what we had done already here. So chaining up one, so you go right into the space with a double and then we're going to then extend it into the middle one down here. Just give it a bit of slack to pull it up. See how that pulls everything together? That's what gets rid of that granny square look and then you're just gonna double crochet. So chain up one, go to the next space, do the extended double down into the middle one and then in the same space a double. So I want you to continue this and then we're going to uh, review ourselves when we get closer to this side here where I'll pick you up and then we'll uh, go and turn the corner together. Now I'm coming closer and I'm just gonna chain one after this group. So this one here that I'm about to do is where I'm going to start those ridges and once we do that then the ridges are going to follow this projection all the way up and we'll also do one on this side which then will project out in the other direction. So to do that we're going to start off the space like we know it so we're gonna double crochet first and then we're gonna do a front post treble all the way down into this middle one. So instead of being on the top we're into the side of the post which creates that ridge. So wrap the hook twice because it's a treble and then coming down and into the middle one around the post itself and pull through and pull through two, two and two all the way back up and then in the same space double crochet. So this raises this up versus the other one where it stays flat where everything else stays flat. You're now gonna turn the corner so chain one before you do that and it's a V stitch right in the corner. So as you know it, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and then chain one to go to the next space. So the next space is going to be an exact one of this. So it'll be a double crochet to start and then wrapping the hook twice and coming down into the middle one around the post. So this is a front post treble and then double crochet back into that same spot. So that's all that we're gonna do for the ridging on this round. You'll see that every time we get bigger and on the odd number you'll see that we're gonna be adding more and more as we get closer uh, along. So let's uh, just chain up one and we're gonna do the spacing like we already know it. So a double crochet and extended double into this stitch and then a double and etc. and chain one. So I will see you back at the very beginning here and we'll turn the corner exactly what you know it so there is nothing like this on the other side. It's just what you already know and turn the corner with the V, oh actually the corner is already done. So I will just meet you at the end of this round. Serve it up. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of number three so just chaining up one and then just join. So the corner of the first one was already done. We've already passed by it when we started this one. So we're just gonna slip and turn your work and then we're back on an even number which is number four and in this case it's exactly what you know. So we're not gonna worry about putting in those ridges because we're on the wrong side. You can't see them. So we're only doing these ridges here when we're, when we can actually see them on the right side. So let's move on to round number four. So when we go to do this, round number four is exactly what you already know. The, so the, when you get to a corner, you're just gonna put a V stitch. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and everything else is that fun stuff of the extended double. So you're gonna start off like you know it. So chain three and come down into the middle one for an extended double and then double into the same sp space. And then chain one and move along. So double it's the middle one and then double. So you're gonna do that and then once you get to, sorry that wasn't a double, that was a single. So you're going to just double that one 
So you, then you're gonna chain one and continue that same all the way around. V-stitch in the corner and then continue that same pattern going all the way around. V-stitch into this corner and meet me back up right here. This is round number four. So it's a nice easy round to do. So every other round will be like this when you're going to do this and you will notice that it'll, be get, it'll just get easy because you don't have to really think much about it. So I'll see you at the end of round number four. So I'm coming up to the first time that I'm doing the V-stitch uh, before the V-stitch here. I just realized that there's not three in a row here at this V at this uh, because it's just a V-stitch here. So it is the first one of the two just like you're you're going to see. So it's the closest one to the, the corner. That's the one you're gonna do the extended double down into and then you'll just fill in that spot and then chain up one and then do your V-stitch. So this is the very corner. Okay, and then chain one. So you'll, when you go to drop down into this one, so you're gonna just double crochet first and then drop down to the first one of the grouping of two. So it's the one closest to the corner for your extended double and then fill in the remaining of the space with the double and can carry on. So you'll do the same for the other side. So it's the double crochet that's closest to the corner is where you're going to be dropping and I'll see you at the end of this round. I just wanted to clarify that. So I'm finishing the end of this round. This is round number four and just chaining up one and then just joining it to the top of the first chain three and then we're gonna turn our work and be back on an odd number which will be number five and when you turn around you should see the ridging that is up on the other side coming up and we're on the good side of the project. So let's begin number five and let's start. So let's start number five. You're gonna chain three and then you're doing your extended to the middle one down so the difference is, is that each time you're turning now this, the corners get further and further away from the slip stitch line. So just keep an eye on that. So you're doubling into that same space. Chain up one and then you're coming into the next one but there's only the two V stitches. So it's just like you did before. So you're double crocheting. You're extending down to the one that's left that's closest to the corner. And then you're double crocheting in that same spot uh, space. So just pull it if you don't see it. Then chain one and do your V-stitch which you already know. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And then carry on. And what we want to do is that we wanna get close to the other side. So as you're uh, moseying on along, so you're just gonna chain one, fill in the next spot. It's part of the V-stitch down here. So it's the first one that's closest to the corner there in the spot and then chain one and then move on. So right where the ridging is here, that's going to be where it's gonna start. So when we go to do the next one, because we were on the wrong side, we are then going to be picking up the ridging and building up another. So we're gonna have then two ridges showing up. And then every time we end up on an odd number like this, then there will be an, add, an added ridge each and every time and build it out as you see within the model. So I'll see you there in just a moment on the first time we do the ridge and then we'll do our second set of ridges at that moment. So I'll see you back there, uh, see you there in just a moment. So now moving along, so the next one I'm going to do is gonna be in the space and I see that there's a ridge right there. I don't know if you can see it or not but it's right there. So we wanna maintain that ridge. So when we're going to do this one here which is to start, so I've already chained one just to finish this one. So I'm going to double crochet in the next one and we're gonna do a front post treble around this existing one right here and that'll keep that ridging carrying on and then continue to double crochet in that same spot. So that ridging is going to carry on. So chain up one but the corner is over here now because we've uh, turned and went back the other direction we have now have a new one to play with, a new space. So you're just going to double crochet first and like we had done before where we grabbed the first one, like when we went down, it's the one closest to the corner. We're going to grab the one closest to the corner again. So this will be a front post treble around the one that's closest to the corner. And this just created the another layer of those ridges that you saw within the model sample and then double crochet in the same spot. So now you have two ridges starting. So now you have uh, just chain one and do a V-stitch into the corner to turn. So this time 
we're going to begin and start a ridge right away because there is no ridge there because you can see the other ridge is just coming up. Okay, so then chain up one, go into the next spot, double crochet and do the front post treble around the one closest to the corner down here. So you've now just created a new ridge there now too. And then just double crochet there, chain up one. The next one already has the ridging going in but you can see here so you're just gonna double crochet first and then front post treble around the existing one. And then double crochet back into that same spot. So now you can see that there's two sets of ridges going on here. So you're just gonna carry on the pattern as you know it and when we get there um, we're gonna be running into the back of the other side here. It's just what you already know. So just uh, double crochet, extended double in and a double and I'll see you at the end of this round. This is round number five. Once you get all the way to the end of number five, you're just gonna chain one and then slip stitch to the top of the chain three and you're gonna turn your work and you'll be on round number six which is exactly what you already know. Okay, so it's the, the extended doubles. So just remember when you hit a corner, it's the one closest to the corner when you do the extended double down and, and it's the same on both sides. So this is very similar to then the row that you already did on number four. So we just keep on repeating with what we already know. So we're just gonna start with chain three, do an extended double down to the middle and then in the same spot you're going to put in your double crochet. So chain one and then go to the next one. So when you hit your corners it'll be um, your V-stitches here in the corners and you'll carry on and then you'll come back and you'll do your V-stitch in this corner and then meet me back here and then we'll move on to round number, uh, sorry round number six from that point. Sorry we'll move on to round number seven. So we're currently on round number six now. So I'm coming all the way around on round number six. Number six is a constant by the way. So in the future we're gonna be repeating road the, what we just, the concept for round number six over and over and over in between the rounds that you have to add more and more of those ridges as we're getting closer to the point on the one side. Once you get that last one done just chain up one and just go in to the top of the chain three and then we're gonna do round number seven next. So just turn it and you're back on the odd number which means that we should see the ridges on the other side which I do and we're going to begin number seven next. So round number seven is going to be the start of the repeat that we have and what we're going to do is that we're just gonna start off with what you already know. So just chaining up the three and we're on the side that does not have those ridges. So you're just gonna have to build it up and go around that point as you already know it with the V-stitch. Just make sure you're chaining one in between each one of these. And then I'm going to meet you up where those ridges start on the other side. Okay, so I'll meet you up over here and we're gonna be adding another set of ridging in. So we have one ridge, two and then we're gonna be adding a third one this time on round number seven. So this is how we're going to expand it and make more, more ridges each and every time you're turning it around um, to do the odd number uh, sides. So let's uh, meet you there in just a moment. So I'm round number seven is continuing so I just chained one. So the next one here has the ridging. It's the first one of the grouping. So double crochet and continue to make that a front post treble around the existing one and that keeps that moving up and then double and then chain one. Start the next one. It already has the ridging from before. So double crochet, front post treble around that one. and double crochet in the same spot and now we're gonna create a new ridge. So chaining up one and coming into the next one, double crochet. You're gonna come to the one that's closest to the corner and make that a front post treble and then double crochet in that same spot. Chain one and then V-stitch it. Okay, so we need to create a new ridge when we come out of this corner. So chain one before you move on. So we're gonna have to create that ridge and the first one that's here. So double crochet in the next spot. Front post treble around 
the first one closest to the corner and then the same spot double crochet and then chain one. So you're gonna come to the next spot. It already has the treble coming in here. So double crochet first, front plus treble coming down. So you can see where these trebles are now. So you can remove the stitch markers out if you'd like to. Okay, chain one, come to the next one. It has a treble coming in that you see. So make that, continue that. double crochet in. Okay and so therefore these ridging are now done on this side. So you're gonna maintain which I already know uh, just the regular uh, ideas of coming down and you'll finish on the other side and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So chain one, double into the next, extend a double down and double into the same. Please do that all the way around for the remaining of round number seven. So I'm just finishing up round number seven. So we're now gonna officially turn and start round number six which is, or sorry, round number eight which is the same as round number six. So seven, or sorry, so seven and eight is the repeat pattern for the remaining of this. So remember, so let's uh, begin row number six again and let's do that. So number six, we're back on the back side so just chaining up three and then just extend a double in, down and then double here. And so you're just gonna work your way all the way around in the corners. You will put in your V stitches and coming all the way back to this corner of V stitch and then what you already know. So it's just a nice easy round and this is round number eight which is the end of the repeat and this is where we will leave you for those instructions to finish off the remaining and then I'm gonna move on to show you how to do the bottom edging as well as the top necking spot at that point. So get this all the way done. This is round number uh, eight which is the same as number six. I'm now at the end of round number eight. I'm looking at the back side. So when you go to turn you'll be on the right side of the project which is the front. You have the ridges. It almost looks like a large leaf at this moment which is pretty awesome. And so the ridges are growing on the one side opposite to the side that you are starting. You'll notice that the stitch marker, or sorry the slip stitch line is getting further and further away so it'll follow up but it, it's blended so well that you can barely notice it's there. So now I need you to repeat rows number seven and eight until you get to either finishing off row number uh, 24, 26 or 28 it's depending on the size. So look at the size that you wanna finish. No matter how big you wanna get it, you need to finish off round number eight because round number eight will take you to start on the right side of the project where we will do the final round together which is what I'll show you here in just a moment. So please now just put me on pause and come back to me at another time when you get all your rows done. So you'll do rows number nine through 24, nine through 26 or nine through 28 and if you want it bigger or smaller then you can just stop at any point. So I'm going to get ready and show you how to do the bottom edge and so once your round number eight is done at the end of your repeat we're going to start and do the final round to finish it off. Let's begin the edging round. So right where we are, when we go to start we're only gonna chain one and we're going to start in the very first stitch that we are currently in and you're going to single crochet. We are still going to do the extended double uh, coming down and you will come down into the middle one of the one below. But this time the remaining three, you're not gonna skip over to those, you're just gonna put one single in each. So the extended double is basically burying in the gapping space. So coming down and then single crochet in the next three. And so this is closing it all down and so we're gonna be getting close to the corner which I'll show you how to do in a second and you'll do the same thing with both of the corners. So you're just gonna single crochet and so you're going to come down to the first one like you had been before with an extended and you're gonna double crochet the remaining two that are left and then in this chain two space uh, from what I read um, it's only gonna be two single crochets so one and two and then immediately start in these double crochets here. So continuing and then jump down. So wherever there's a space to jump down you are gonna jump down with an extended double and then just continue to single crochet the remaining stitches that are on top. So please do this all the way around. This is the end of the edging and you can see it fills it in from taking it from the gapping 
to filling it in. So do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. We'll review on how to fasten off and then we still have a neck to finish. When you come all the way back around just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet that you started with and pull it nice and tight and then that's it. So I want to show you how to fasten this off. Then we're gonna move to the neck next. So I'll show you just the one time. So take the strand. So if you are changing yarn this is how, what you would do as well. Now this is the good side of the project so I would turn it so when I go to do this that I'll be on the back side and I'm just gonna glide it through some stitch work here on the back. So once when you pull it don't change the shape twice and finally a third time is a charm. And so you'll, you should be able to safely cut that out and you're good. So let's move on to the neck. We have two rounds to do and let's begin to do that next. Let's begin to do the neck. I'm just going to grab my yarn. Now the project should be the right side is facing up so I should see those ridges on the right side. I'm going to start just before the corner. So I'm just gonna start a little bit back. So in this chain one space that's where I'm gonna start and I'm going to attach it with the slip stitch and then chain one in one single crochet. So it's telling you to do a two together before and after the chain two space. So it's been marked here. So if you, and if you can't see it it's the point. So the two before the point and the two after the point are gonna become two together. So I'm just going to match the stitch work exactly what to what I see. So in this case I'm just filling it in with single crochets and so these are the two before the point. So I'm gonna make those as a two together. So just pull through and the next one pull through and then pull through all three loops and then jump to the other side of the point and you'll do this on both sides by the way. Put those two together and then you're gonna carry on. So you'll have in this case just fill it in. So you have a double crochet is next and then there's a chain one space. Go right up over top of that straggler if you haven't uh, hit it in yet. And so I'm just going to maintain with what I already know. So just single crochet and then you can see that there's double crochets going on there. So don't get confused on those ones that come down because I'm kind of getting confused with that here. Those ones that are extending down because those were into like a spacing when you were doing that. So just to kind of watch for that. So it's one single in each going all the way around. Just make it look good if you're, if you're getting confused in any way. So I got my three. So here's the one that comes down. So you could go into the bottom of that one and maintain that one. And then just jump to the next double crochet that's available. So okay, so just before the point and after the point put the two together and then meet me back here in just a moment and I'll see you on the other side of this and we'll finish up this round together. And finally uh, rounds two and three are both the same. So you're just going to just finish off round number one just with the slip stitch. So you're gonna do two together over three once you get to a point. How we do that is that we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet. So we just have to just kind of bring ourselves in to be a lot more narrow. So you got three in a row and what you're gonna do is a two together over three. So going into the next one pull through, skip the next one and go to the one after that and pull through and pull through all three. So that was a two together over three and that really narrows that in. And now you're gonna continue to single crochet yourself all the way to around and when you get to the other point you just wanna do t the two together over three as well and then just join it with a slip stitch and then you'll do the round one more time to finish it off and then this will give it a nice uh, finishing border at the very top of your poncho. So I'll meet you at the end of this round and we'll talk and then that's it for today's tutorial. So I'm coming up on round number two and then I'm just gonna slip stitch and do the round one more time. So just slip stitch to the beginning, chain up one and one single crochet and then in the corner here you're gonna do two over three. So just that one, skip the next one and just roughly guess it if you're not sure and that will close it in beautifully and then you'll continue to do the two over three on the other side and then just finish it off with the slip stitch and I'll see you back here in a second. This is gonna be the end of round number three which is the final. So that's it for my story today and I'm just gonna slip stitch. I, I've already shown you how to weave in but let's take a look at the sample that I've created. It's a miniature 
yeah because the repeating was actually pretty easy once we got to that level. So if you fold it in a certain way you would actually see a triangle. So let's just back you out a little bit here. So this will be here. This side has nothing as far as like the ridging and this side does have the ridging and you can see how the ridging uh, grew out. So when you see her wearing it she's actually wearing it somewhat like this uh, in the in the photograph and that's something that you can decide for yourself as well. It actually looks pretty fashionable in today's era as well. So you can remove out your stitch markers and it's actually really easy. The other side looks pretty good too. So if it blows in the wind it's no big deal but you have a little bit of vis visual interest and the coloring looks amazing too. So it's nice and finished and this is something that you can enjoy. So this is the Mountain Breeze Poncho by Yarnspirations.com. Designer was Lorraine Epilite and uh, that's it for today and we hope you have a good one and we hope to see your creativity on Facebook or other social media sources. We'll see you again real soon. Here comes the hands. Bye bye.